Hey guys, welcome back to another installment of HairTube. I'm here today with Gigi. Hi. We just met, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um, and we're going to do a hair today. So we had a little bit of a chat first and uh, we spoke about um, maintaining the condition for curl and wave. So we're going to address that with a haircut and then we're just going to hide her roots and keep her like a strawberry blonde. So something different today because normally we're either doing really, really blonde balayage or brunette. So doing some strawberry blonde will be fun. So that'll be, be good. Very good. You excited? Yeah. You seem a little bit nervous, so. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> She's only just met me, can't blame her, I'm a bit of a weirdo. Um, yeah, so it should be good. So approaching a colour this way because um, we want to have flexibility going forward. So by just foiling the root to like to sort of blur the regrowth and then uh, toning the hair today, we do a root stretch and tone the ends. It's going to give Gigi some flexibility going down the track. She can go lighter. Um, she can tone it a different colour, strawberry blonde, maybe a little bit of pink, maybe a little bit of like a buttery blonde. Um, it gives a nice even palette going forward for her to be able to be flexible with the color and maintain the condition So it'll be good. So we're gonna go in and do some foils in the roots Just gonna use some light master with bonder inside and 6% um, We're literally just gonna do a little T section through here and in through the hairline So if she pulls her hair back, we can't see her roots as much um, And then we're gonna use some color sink on the ends I'm thinking probably 8 CG and maybe some clear but um, We're gonna have a chat to her about that later and we'll choose a color together Sounds good um, Better get started then, eh? We've been talking too much already. <laughs> I'm gonna head out the back, get some color, and we'll be back, we'll get going, see you soon. All right, so we're gonna do some foils. I'm gonna start sort of in the middle of the eye here um, and work my way up to the parting, and then I'm just gonna lay some diagonally. So obviously I need to do the underneath first. So I'm gonna lay some foils this way diagonally, just weave nice and soft, and we'll start breaking that regrowth up. So just to recap, and something I didn't mention before I started, so um, I went in and just weaved the, um, the root, and I use a weaving comb because I find that it makes it like really consistent. And then I did 6% uh, in the root, 3% on the end, so we clean it out. So what that's gonna do is actually give us some variation to color as well. Don't have to worry about the ends because it'll be very gentle. Um, so we're gonna process now, wait for the roots to come up, and then when you see us next, we're gonna be applying the root stretch, and then we're gonna tone the ends too, so we'll back soon.
are back from the basin. Let me I'll put your chair down a little bit gorgeous. Let me bring you up a bit higher because you're a little. Look at this hair, look how beautiful it is. Often I cut hair um, dry and I think we're going to do the same again. The only thing that's going to be a little bit different is I'm actually going to be cutting G's hair so it works well curly and straight. I wouldn't normally do that dry but I'm going to because I guess with experience um, I would recommend someone with less experience to do it when it's wet so you can layer it and consider the movement. The technique that I'm going to use I've used on hair uh, after flat brushing it and cutting it dry and then I've seen it worn curly and it works well so I'm confident to do it dry so I'm going to flat brush your hair um, and when it's all dry uh, we're going to come back and start a haircut. G and I spoke about the length, so I'm just going to trim it up first. Always start with the symmetrical parting, just because um, when we're doing the baseline, we want it to be symmetrical. Usually, not always. If you're doing an asymmetrical haircut, that's fine. But uh, if, if your client has an ass for an asymmetrical haircut and it ends up being that way, maybe it's because your sectioning wasn't symmetrical. So sectioning is important to make sure that we stay balanced with our haircut. Shorter on one side, longer on the other is cool. Unless it wasn't asked for, then it's awkward. It can actually be really awkward. It's like, yeah, it's meant to be like that. <laughs> Not really. Come on, we've all been there. Young hairdressers out there, you've all been there. Clients that are watching, I know you've been there. I'm about being honest. Because if it's happened to me, I know it's happened to you. Because we're all human. All right, let's start off on this uh, baseline. So spin G around. And we're going to probably remove like uh, maybe three centimeters from the back and probably won't be that much to the front because we've spoken about just leaving a little bit longer towards the front. Um, just so it sits just below her collarbones and above her chest. We just felt like that was a, a really good length for her. If we were going to go above so if we're going to go any shorter than that, I would prefer we go above the shoulders because otherwise you end up in this nor here nor there sort of place and after a few weeks it starts flicking out on the shoulders. And look, that's fine, but it's not something that I particularly like and uh, as we were chatting while we had our lunch, while the colour was processing, um, I do people's hair um, because they like my aesthetic. So. Um, people who don't like the way I cut hair, they won't come to see me. Not because they don't know how to cut hair, but maybe they don't like the things that I like on them. And that's okay. So for me, um, having it here on the shoulders and flicking up is not something I'm really a fan of. Okay, back's done. <laughs> I'm gonna spin, I'll get you to look down the salon, please G. Um, the reason why I do that is so when I'm cutting here, I don't have to worry about running into the shoulder. So when I turn the head to the side, straight away it's easy to do this um, because we don't have to worry about running to there. And it's easy to keep a clean line. As you can see, you saw the amount that I took off the back it was probably about an inch and a bit, uh, three, three centimeters, but you can see as I said in the front, it is literally, it starts at about a centimeter and finishes at about two mil two millimetres because we just want to li literally nick that little bit off the front so we have those uh, points coming down onto the collarbone and the chest and we want to keep that slightly diagonal forward um, design line to the exterior of this haircut and again just make sure we don't have any hair stuck behind the ear don't stretch it down too far over the ear either otherwise you end up with that little bump it's a little bit Embarrassing if you end up with that little step in here it means that you've stretched the hair too tight over the ear and then when the hairs let go we've got a little hole basically on the side of the haircut and the reason why we're cutting it here is to avoid that. Perfect. Alright, now we're going to shape the front. We <laughs> things to consider when doing this technique in hair that's got wavies. When it's got wavy, it gets shorter. 
So always allow yourself a little bit of extra length so that when the hair's dry, naturally dried, scrunch dried, diffused, however they're gonna do it, give yourself a little bit of room. So, you know, if you've seen the hair curly when your client's arrived, you can generally make an estimation on how much it's gonna spring up by seeing how curly it is. So if it's like really tight, if it's loose. So for G, I'm gonna make sure that I leave it about a quarter, of, well, maybe half an inch longer, and then I would prefer her to ring, ring me up and say, hey Ads, can I just drop in after work and get you to trim my bangs because they're a little bit long? I'd rather that than to come in and say, yeah, look, my bangs are good now, but when you did them, they were way too short. So again, always Ed, to the side of caution for me because um, you can always trim a little bit more off. You've seen me do this before. Um, the method and the application of this technique doesn't change because of the hair texture. Um, we're still gonna use a triangle shape um, or a pizza section, a pie section, you can see that. Um, triangles for me are the best shape to control the distribution of hair. And I'm gonna put G down so you can see the projection. So I'm gonna aim for, we wanna be able to tuck this behind your ear, yeah? Can we do it? No, no, when I've cut it, you wanna you want be able to tuck it behind your ear, right? Yeah. Is that sort of length? So we'll go just below your chin so you can tuck it, yeah? Um, the other thing we spoke about is because G has a cowlick in front, we also got to take into consideration that there's naturally, occur naturally occurring elements in the hairline, in the crown, in the nape. Um, obviously the nape won't matter so much for this length haircut, the crown definitely will for the layering. And obviously any shape we put around the hairline, you have to factor that in because again, cowlicks shorten hair. So when I wrap dried the hair, it would have lengthened the cowlick a little bit and that's the point. Um, but also, again, need to factor in that when RG does it again, that's going to spring up a little bit. So, things to keep in mind before you go and cut it too short like I have in the past. Not on G, but when we're learning, we all uh, make mistakes. Well, it's not a mistake, it's a learning opportunity. So, projection is in a rectangle, square on the top, square on the bottom or on the base. And make sure... So we check the length first, it's still a little bit long. Another centimeter I think will be good. And then we just wanna create a little bit of softness towards the front of our triangle section. The back is quite lean and narrow, so you won't need as much texture there. You can see that it's quite light, but here in the front it's dense. So we just wanna take some of the bulk out of there. Another thing when I'm working with hair with texture and movement, um, whether it be curl or just wave is I would never use texturizing scissors or thinning scissors on it because that's the quickest way to turn beautiful wave into frizz. So we need to be patient, disciplined and use straight blades to create texture. I just grab my hair dryer, spin G around, just keep your eyes closed darling. I'll just blow this off your face. You've got hair on there. And we can have a look at how that sits and make sure. So put our hands through it like this one back in the center and we can see that's just shaping in and around the face there I think that's going to be quite nice really beautiful shape you just see that nice little triangle shape in there G can't see a thing because the camera is literally right in front of her face but that's a good thing so if she uh, looks at it at the end when we do the reveal and she acts surprised it's because she really is not because I've scared her um, okay so we've done that and I just want to incorporate a little bit of shape between our bangs and the ends. So we're gonna use that as a guide. And I'm gonna create two more triangle shapes. One here, and I'll show you how it's a triangle. So you can see there, we've got a point here, and this is square, because look at the hairline straight, and then we've got point here. And then we're gonna project this. Actually, I'll come around this side so you can see. I'm gonna project this in a rectangle. In a rectangle, just head up for me, gorgeous. A bit more, a bit more, a bit more. I know I'm ugly, but you gotta look up at me. Thanks. Right there, just close your eyes so you don't get hair in there. And project it at a rectangle, 90 degrees to the scalp. And then where I see our bangs pop out here, we're gonna use that as our guide. I'll just bring you a little bit more this way so they can see. Perfect. And all we want to do is cut 
from the back straight to, towards where our bang is there. And you can see how that falls in the front there. Just making sure we haven't missed any. And then we want to keep doing that all the way through until we run out of here and then we repeat it on the other side. And then when we see this, literally just want to join up to where our bangs were. Beautiful. Cross check from the top. The idea of this is to put some shape in and around the face without touching the points that are going to sit down here just below a collarbone. Because if we're going to cut those out, then we just wasted 30 minutes putting them in. So we cross check from the top. Perfect. Let's see what that looks like now. We've got the entire shape in the front. Let's rake it back with our fingers. Loosen it up a little bit. There's a movement you have in your hairline, is beautiful. Makes it even more special, it's good. You can see now just here, it gives that nice little bit of integration through. Still keeps the points here. We've now got some shape through there. We may actually be more important when the hair's curly rather than straight. Um, now we move on to the back. So as I said, this is gonna be a little bit tricky because we're actually doing this to be more curly as well. So I'm gonna show you the differences. That's why I'm gonna have G on this angle. So we're gonna take a vertical section straight down the back and then we're gonna project it. So normally if we were doing for seamless only, we would wanna have it really short to long and scoop it away. We still wanna do that, but we actually wanna leave a little bit more of angle on there. And you can see why, you can see how that stacks there now. You can see that stack. So now we're gonna take another one centimetre wide vertical section and bring it into that guideline. Let's make sure it's nice, clean. You haven't missed any. It's still seamless. You can see it's still seamless like that. So if we wanna wear it straight, it's no problem. Now we're gonna split that in two and we're gonna bring all the hair on the left-hand side in to the center of this section. So we're over-directing it until we run out of hair. So when the hair that you're bringing, because depending on the length of hair, some hair might not reach there. Don't go chasing it, don't go looking for it. There's no hair to cut, you move on you won't um, suffer a lesser result because you're not sectioning the hair more. Spin G this way. And then I'm just doing this so that we can soften that cutting line because I like to put my texture on the inside out, not on the outside in. That way no one sees it. And again, very, very important that we don't cut across our design line. We're literally cutting within that shape and giving the hair room to expand so that as this uh, wave forms, when we dry it naturally and it stacks, it doesn't get too wide. Um, it allows the hair to sit flatter and closer to itself. No one wants to see chunky layers. Well, maybe they do, but certainly in my clients, one of the things they specifically say is, I want volume, I want shape, I want movement, but I want to see no layers. Um, and this is how I do it. Okay, now it's time to do this side. And then, when we're done, we're gonna do some styling. And we're gonna set you on your merry way mm -hmm. and turn every woman that walks past you green with envy. Mm -hmm. That's my, uh, my goal for today anyway. Just give it a quick blast to get the hair out. Otherwise, after we style G's hair, she'll have a little bit of um, no, little little shards of cut hair falling out on her. 
And um, her boyfriend will definitely take her out to dinner after seeing a hair like this. And you want to make sure you don't have little pieces of hair falling out on your dinner plate because that's never nice. And trust me, as a hairdresser, I never go out to dinner until I've been home, had a shower and changed my clothes because it happens. And even though you can't get sick from hair, it's just sort of gross. There's our raw shape, done. Beautiful strawberry blonde. And now it's time to do some styling. All right, so we're gonna finish up now. So what we need is, we've got our smooth setter there. Need some volume fixer. So we make sure that we can keep a little bit of volume fixer. Just head this way for me, G. Eyes closed, please. So always spray on the inside. Head a little bit more, 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 more. Yep, perfect. And then we're gonna do the opposite, please. Perfect. Yep, a little bit on my hands. Rub your hands together, and then again, we're just gonna use this and mold the front. This beautiful shape. I think you look fab. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, you look amazing. I mean, you did when you got here, but now your hair looks amazing, so. I love it so much. It's good. So, look, let's recap what we did. Um, we had a little bit of regrowth. It was actually, again, like last video, it was very difficult to deal with because small regrowth um, just requires precision when you're lightening it in. So we went in there, we weaved out just in and around the hairline and through the parting, like T-section, um, stretched the root, 8CG and uh, 9M. Uh, we did 50-50, and then we did 8CG and 10M on the ends. We removed the triangularness, or well, the triangular silhouette that was left in the haircut, which is effectively it was a one length haircut. It was grown out, um, so it was triangle. We used increased layering to create elongated shapes, and now it's oval, so it's much more uh, flattering. So you can see already on, on G, it's starting to come around and sort of inner body line. So one of the things I say to my clients that wear their hair long is really important, especially when you're little like G, if you're gonna have your hair out here, people just see the silhouette. So they just see this triangle coming at them. So it's very important that we work in, not only with uh, using, you know, what would complement the face shape, but also the body shape. And um, when you're little, when your hair's long and it's big, it's just like, is there a person with that head of hair? So you get lost in it. So um, I think we did really good. Thank you happy? Yeah. And then we just did that shape around the front too, which looks good. Yeah, it does look good.